and give God a hand clap of praise. Good morning, church. Hallelujah. Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord? Y'all just help us worship him on today. I'm so glad they said come into the house of the Lord. And we come to just give him all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. He's such an awesome God. Hallelujah. I have found the peace that plows on through.
room. Come on, bless the Lord in the room. Somebody tell him thank you for everything he's done. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's stay in the uh, mode of worship this morning. How many of you know that you serve a big God? A big, big God. A big, big, big God. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on.
with you in the good times and the bad. We're going to be worshiping today.
today. Anybody need strength? Is there anybody in the room that's watching need strength? David said, I will look to the hills from which cometh all my help. Can anybody agree with me this morning that all my help comes from the Lord? Is there anybody willing to reach up beyond the break? Reach beyond your struggle. Reach beyond your pain. Reach beyond your heartache and pain. Reach up and hold to God's unchanging hand. The Bible says in all things, give thanks. Are there truly anybody too, truly thankful for life, health, and strength? For being able to put your feet on the floor and see another day. Who focuses on the truth and the power of God's word? I know you may be going through some storm, but the Bible said, when praises accelerate up, what comes down? What comes down? I said, what's come down? Anybody need a blessing from the Lord today? Anybody need a blessing from the Lord today? I hope and confidence is not in a football game, but I hope and confidence is in an almighty God who sits at the right hand of the Father, who defeated death. He has victory. And how many of you can declare that I'm under the blood of Jesus? He has purged me from all my sins. Are there any blood washed believers today? Listen, whatever you're going through, you can simply sing. You are my strength. Strength like no other. Strength like no to me. Listen, when you're weak, you are my strength. Strength like no other. When I talk to him, you're strength like no other. If you're watching in prison this morning, it reaches to me. When you have failed, you can say, you are my Somebody gonna catch it in a minute. Strength like no other. Make it personal. Strength like no other. Reaches to me. And when I got saved, I can say, listen. In the fullness of your grace. been lift up. You lift me up. You lift me up. Come on, say, in the fullness to me if you're in a place 
and you don't have an answer. You come to with sin. And you feel like throwing in town. It seems like everything and everybody is waged against you. But I found out he is my refuge. He is my leaning tower. And in him, how many of you can testify you find peace? That will surpass, transcend all human understanding. For the Bible says, can the cast your cares? We're casting our cares on social media. We're casting our cares to a neighbor, to a friend. But I heard him say, cast all your cares on him. Anybody can testify he cares for you. Did he bring anybody in the room through if you're watching? Did he bring you through? How many can testify he's bringing you through right now? And I heard him say that the gates of hell. Should never prevail. So it's not a talking about a building. But let me testify, if you are the church, no matter the rocks thrown, no matter the arrows flung, the Bible said the gates of hell should not say prevail against me. Come on, lay hands on yourself, not against me. Come on, make it person. Hell should not prevail against me. Say with me, I'm a winner. Oh, y'all ain't going to testify. Say, I'm a winner. Say, I'm not defeated, but I am an overcomer. Jesus said, I overcame the world. And if you believe on him, how many know you can overcome? I just need somebody to jump to your feet, shout, I am an overcomer. Come on, come on, if you really believe it, say, I am an overcomer. Come on, if you can testify in this world, say, I am an overcomer. Say, I'm no longer down, but I, I look to Jesus and, and he will bring me up. Come on and tell him hallelujah. Come on and tell him hallelujah. He will lift you up. All I'm trying to tell you, no matter where you find yourself, remember this. You are my strength. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Help me say, somebody clap your hands, give God glory. Come on, give God glory in the room. I dare you to praise him now and thank him for what he's doing in your life. Woo! Bless the Lord. Amen. Somebody say amen. Come on and shout amen. The Bible says witness to the truth. This is a blessed day. Matter of fact, every day that we live is a blessed day. For this is the day the Lord has made. Not just Sunday, the first day of the week, or the Sabbath, which is Saturday, but watch this. This is the day the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice. Be thankful in it. I'm going to be glad in it. And watch this, I'm going to be satisfied in it. Anybody beside me can be satisfied in what God is doing and how he's making a way out of no way and how he's bringing things to pass. Look at your neighbor and encourage your neighbor. Say, hello. Come on, really mean it. Say, hello. Say, I'm glad to see you. Some of y'all ain't lift your voice. Matter of fact, y'all move, get out of your seat. Go to somebody you didn't talk with about the game on yesterday. Y'all don't got that out your system. Now, I want the real blood wash believers that know the Bible said you show yourself friendly, you obtain friend. Go to somebody who you hadn't seen that you didn't talk with the game with and tell him hello. Come on, tell him hello. Amen.
bless them. Tell them welcome to True Water Life. You're watching right now on social media on Glory Star Satellite System. We want to welcome you to the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And while you're blessing the people, amen. Just don't stop at one. Go to somebody. Go to them. Y'all move up top, move down low. Bless them. Today will be the best day, the best day of my life. Today will be the best day, the best day. Listen. Today will be the best day, the best day of my life. Today will be the best day I get my joy back. When? Today. I'll get my hope back. When? Say today. Best day, best day of my life. Hallelujah. Amen. And to all of you that's watching us live, God bless you. Thank you for joining us. We thank God for what he's doing in this season and how he is bringing turnaround to the life of the believer. Amen. How many veterans do we have with us today? What are all of our veterans? I want all of our veterans to join us. Go wide, Andre, so you can join us on stage. If you're a veteran that you served in the armed forces, I want you to come to the stage. Amen. Come on to the stage. Y'all give it up for our veterans. The Bible tells us to give honor to where honor is due. Amen. Hey, y'all come on. Do y'all can do better than that. To all of you, to all of you that's watching who have served our country faithfully. I want to tell you, we thank God for you. Thank God for your service. Thank God for the things that He has done in your lives and the things that He is doing in your lives and we just bless God because we realize that it had not been for your dedication amen and your sacrifice many of us would not enjoy the freedom freedoms now that we readily enjoy so again we're thankful and I celebrate you amen amen y'all come on get even with the stage amen come on over there brother amen you don't got talking about the game out your system Amen. Well, we want to honor them. I know this has been a Marine. He served the Marine. Y'all get it for Andre. BJ was on me. Amen. What was your MO? Military supply. Military supply and infantry. Third infantry. Charles Zimmerman. Y'all give it up again for them. So we bless God. I want to... As they get ready to dim the lights, I want to, don't go nowhere, don't go nowhere. He ready to go. Amen. Huh? Oh, we got the Navy. Y'all get it for Clarence right there. Clarence, roll on down front. Roll your chair on down front. Served on a boat. Amen. Amen. Come on down. Y'all give it up for Clarence. He's going to roll on down here in this electric motorized chair. He's going to get right here to the front of the stage. But listen, we honor God. We thank God for what he's doing in this season. We bless him for everything that he has done through those who have served on the land and on the sea. And those that are not here that have served, we bless God for you. But take, look at the screen and be blessed. <laughs>
I'll give it up for our veterans. Come on. Tell them thank you for your service. Come on, say thank you for your service. Amen. Y'all, again, we bless y'all. Thank y'all so much. Amen. Now y'all can leave. Amen. A tin hut. See, they don't forget all the things they were taught. Amen. But God is a good God. He's a magnificent God. I didn't know Clarence served in the Navy. Amen. But it's a blessing just to be alive. Anybody thankful to be in the land of the living? And I'm going to tell you, I'm, I'm very elated. I'm so happy because God simply spoke to me just as I'm speaking to you all. And on yesterday, God birthed something and he manifested something beyond my wildest belief. He allowed us as men to gather together and to conversate. And I want to thank all the men who joined us on yesterday. Amen. God bless you. We had a great dialogue. Y'all come on, give it up for the men. Amen. Y'all can do better than that. Amen. We have to encourage our men, especially black men, to be all that God called you to be. We talk from the book about how God wants us to be respectful to one another. Not only be to respectful to be to one another, but to love one another. And we had a great dialogue, and it was so amazing on the response and the conversation we had, and we gleaned from each other. Me being senior pastor was also blessed to glean from them and all the things that black men have to deal with. Can you can you just know this? Don't don't you do you realize we live a real life every day? Beyond this room, be bo beyond this viewing experience, and how do we take what God is saying to us and allow it to be seen? Many of us shout, we quote scriptures, but we truly fail to live. It's it's not just about being in the room. But can I ask you a question? Whose lives are you impacting? Do we just come to and fro in and out the doors every Sunday and fail to impact somebody's life? Are we just tied into what society has deemed as what is acceptable? Have we truly considered the things of law? The Bible says, he who wins souls is wise. Can I tell you this? It was a meeting of people yesterday that, that, that ain't in titles and stuff. It was just people who have come to found that they need Jesus. I'm to a place I'm not hung up on all this rhetoric and religion. Want to take a gift that God gave us and shine over somebody else when Jesus should be the only one shining. How can I minister to people that can't understand jargon, the jargon of what we say from Sunday to Sunday and not talk down on their level like Jesus did? Jesus was criticized for spending time with those who were in the streets. Here we are. Got everything to do. But can we share the love of God? Can you look at yourself for a minute, for a moment? Can you stop focusing on gossip? Stop focusing on negative stuff. Stop looking at your struggles for one minute and thank God for what he is to you. Thank God for what he did. Can you stop being selfish for just a minute? I want to tell you, everybody in this room are selfish. But can you stop worrying about what you want and start thanking God for what he wants to do in your life? I found out when we can focus on what he wants, we'll be off in a whole better place. And, and, and a lot of times, it's about what I want. The disciples wanted him to reign as king, and he is king. But they wanted him to have an earthly reign. But his, his reign was not, was not earthly because, watch this, he says, all kingdoms going to fall. But the only kingdom in the last days that's going to stand is God's kingdom. That's why the Bible teaches us to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things 
shall be added unto you. And I come to impart in your life that whatever you need, guess what? He has it. And I'm telling you, I'm so excited about what God is going to say to you today. I, I'm just overflowing with joy. I'm excited about what God is doing. I laid down on the last night, and God had kind of gave me. I was in here working by myself late. Before I left, when I got home, I, I had my thing out to read my Bible, but I fell asleep. But he woke me up at 4 o'clock, and he allowed me to read. And can I tell you something? God will give you rest. Anybody resting in him? And I'm thankful. I want everybody to stand to your feet. We're going to the book of Romans, chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, verse 3. For those of you that are watching for your benefit, it will, appear, it will appear on your screen if you're watching, if you're watching. Those of you that don't have your Bibles electronic, it doesn't matter. God wants to speak to you. Romans chapter 12, verse 3. I know you're getting it. Go back to me before you put your scripture up. You're getting everybody an opportunity to get it because many of you may read from different translations, and there's nothing wrong with that because... A lot of us in the old church, I'm, I'm King James, but whether you know it or not, King James was a translation. King James Version was a translation that King James himself wanted the Bible translated, and he decided what books were to make the Bible. That's a little biblical history. So instead of getting hung up on what translation is being read, pray to God that you get a better understanding. Come on, say with me, God, give me a greater understanding. Because the original text in, in the Old Testament was written in Hebrew. And Paul was the greatest writer in the, in the New Testament, and it was written in Greek. Y'all ain't going to say amen. So, so they, all of this has been a translation to where we can understand and let the parishioners come on in. Come on, God bless you. I feel you. Thank you for joining us. But I want to help you. Can I help you? I ain't going to be like the lady to take my shoes off. I can preach with my shoes on. Amen. In the book of Romans, we're going to chapter 12, verse 3. For I say, through the grace given unto me, look what Paul is saying, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. But to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Listen, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Of faith. Here ends the reading. I want you to read that entire chapter. In the time you may have your seat. Amen. Thank you, musicians. Don't y'all go far. Y'all stay close by. Matter of fact, just stay there. Amen. Amen. Have you come to be helped today? Repeat after me. He said, use what your daddy gave you. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing. Say, use what your daddy gave you. Daddy is a term that also refers to father. We oftentimes, in the 18th century, they pin, 16th, 18th century, they pin the term dad, daddy to, to reference father. Say with me, father. Whether we say daddy or, or father, it still means the same thing. And, and, and what we are going to find out that all of us, that's under the sound of my voice, has been given something. Say with me, I've been given something. And we need to learn to use what our daddy gave us. I don't know who you are and where you may be. Do you understand that a lot of people truly don't realize that God gave them something to use? Not only did he give it to you, but he gave it to you to utilize. But oftentimes in life, we always, we look 
at the blessing upon other folk, and we don't realize that God has given us something ourselves. So we're always looking. Tell somebody we're always looking. Now, can I tell you something? Why are we never satisfied? Why aren't we as individuals never satisfied? It's because we have not truly tapped in to what God has given us. So Paul recognized the fact, and you realize that most of us are always telling God to give us something when we haven't done with what we already have. Jabez prayed a prayer in the Old Testament. He says, God, enlarge my territory. Even though he was born uh, he was born in sorrow, he understood that out of that, God was able to bring increase. But in order for him to bring increase, he had to recognize what God had already given him. So a lot of us in the real life pray. Anybody heard the word prayer? How many of you prayed today? How many of you prayed last night? Now I want you to think about it for a second. What did you ask God to do? Glad you got on your mind. Watch this. What did you ask God to do? Okay, let me break down. You asked God to do something that he already gave you the ability to do. There are two prayers God would not answer. He would not answer prayers of what he's already done. He would not answer prayer of what he's already given you the ability to do. So in the process of understanding how I can use what my daddy gave me, you got to first understand that I have something. Say that with me, I have something. That the world didn't give. Now watch this. Can't nobody take nothing away that God gave you. If he gave you authority, guess what? Bad crowd. If he gave me peace, if he gives me strength, guess what? And I don't care what they may do to you. Can't nobody take authority, strength, and peace that God give you. Because what the world give you, they can take it away. But what God gives you, can't no man take away. So we're, we're bogged down in a society, in a world. And Paul is very stern. He's very, he, he's very, he, he's, he, he's, he's unique. As he teaches us. Amen. He's teaching us something. That while you are complaining, while you are mumbling, everything you need to be successful, God already gave it to you from birth. He told Jeremiah, for I knew you when you was in your mother's womb. Jeremiah had to have what God gave him rekindled. He said, it's just like fire. That's what? Ch watch this. Watch. Shut up. Jeremiah, that is a burning on the inside of you, but you got to understand, in order for it to manifest itself, it got to come out of you. It's all right to sing a song, it's just like fire shut up in my bones, and the fire is not on the outside of you. Here you are, say you love the Lord, but you don't know how to give God a praise. Here you are saying you're thankful for what God has done, but you don't know how to tell God thank you in all things, even the good, the bad, and the ugly. So Paul recognized that. Tell somebody he recognized that. He recognized the fact that to every blood wash believer, God has given you something. Shout with me, say, given me something that I can use. Look at here in the very first verse of chapter 12, verse 1. He says, I urge you. It's a plea from Paul in the book of Romans. He says, I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies. Dedicate yourself, set apart for service. Listen here. As a living sacrifice, most of us have everything to do, but we want the blessings of God. We want God to do everything for us. When he gave you life, he done enough. When he saved you from your sins, he done enough. When he, he, he changed your direction in life, he done enough. But here we are in today's world wanting God to do things for us that he's already given you the ability to do because we just don't want to simply dedicate 
our sin. Watch this. Don't look across the room and say, who ain't dedicated? It says, your. Are you making this personal? Watch this. The Bible says in Galatians, be not deceived. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Now if God be God and that is true, watch this. Aren't you glad God don't treat us like we treat him? I guess y'all don't want to testify. I'm so glad that God doesn't do us. Does God drag and think about waking you up in the morning? Or does he just wake you up? Does God have to ponder on whether he's going to allow you to be still in your right mind or he just let your mind be? Does God have to decide whether he needs to go to the football game? I guess, I guess, I guess God is talking to us. Why does, does God say, well, I will do that later. I will wake them up later, but let me watch the game because the present is there. Or does he, as God, be God? Does he be omnipresent, meaning that he can't be at a segregated place in Tuscaloosa, Alabama? Or does he be everywhere we need him to be? Or is he omni, mm, poor, all knowing? Here is God. And you know, I can preach with freedom and be blessed because I know that God says, he says, use what the daddy gave you. Can I tell you something? Ivan, Charles can't stop you from being blessed. You want to know what else, Terrence, why you got your head laid to the slide? My mama can't stop me from being blessed. My faith does not hinge on what mama does. My faith is not hinged on what my dad had done. And the truth be told, my dad is dead in real time, laying in the grave. But I serve a God that got up from the grave, who got all power in his hands. So he says, I beseech you, present your bodies a living sacrifice. Watch this. Holy and well-pleasing. to Watch this. Well-pleasing not to folk. See, you can't use what your daddy gave you trying to please people. You can't use what your daddy gave you trying to satisfy folk. How many know people are never satisfied? Can I make it personal? How many know we ain't never satisfied? We spend billions of dollars, ladies. Let me do some demographic. Billions of dollars trying to get our hair done. Watch this. We come to church one Sunday looking one way. Come make wish tonight looking a whole nother. Y'all ain't got to say amen. Show up again seven days later and we got a whole new look all because we ain't satisfied. Oh, y'all ain't got to say that. I ain't mad. I'm just telling the truth. I'm just telling us. And we spend billions upon billions of dollars trying to fix ourselves when only God can fix you. Only God can try. I don't care how much you dress up. I'm going to mess with that. Alice had on a blonde wig last week, but she ain't got a blonde wig on it. Y'all ain't going to say amen. But let, 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 me, let me show you something. Can I tell you something? The wig don't change, huh? God says, I look on the contents of the character. He says, all I want you to do in all of all of your fixing up is use what your daddy gave you. Watch this. Y'all spend so much money on your hairdo that you're scared to shout. I don't care what the Reverend Pastor Clark said. I spent $160 on this dude, and I beg God if I'm going to mess it up in the church, shout it. But let me tell you something. Get sick, and the doctor can't do you no good. I guarantee you, if your shout will bring your healing, you don't care about the $160 hairdo. Y'all ain't got to say amen in the room. I came already delivered. Hallelujah. So, so, so God tell me to use what you got. See, see we spent all night. Watching a football game. Some of y'all even pray. Tell somebody you're praying for the wrong thing. We ought to be praying for enough courage to use what our daddy gave us. So here we are. He says, he said reasonable, rational, intelligent. Whether you know it or not, the Holy Ghost is not a ghost. 
the Holy Ghost is actually a person. It's not nothing spooky. It's not no Casper the wine ghost or whatever it is. The Holy Ghost is a person. It's a person and it's intelligent. Let me show you something. The Holy Ghost is so intelligent that it makes sure there's clarity. So a lot of y'all want to go through the motion and run around the church. That's fine, but it, out of your running, make sure you're listening. Out of your falling out, make sure you're hearing what that person. I, I'm tired of folk. Let me just deal with this. Religion. Oh, yes. Religion has broke a lot of y'all. There have been some preachers that are pimps that have used religion to pimp the folk. In slavery, they use religion. Y'all ain't got to say nothing. They keep you submissive. Not understanding that even in slavery, folk had to come out. Y'all ain't going to shout in the room. See, the reason your communities cannot live because you're not utilizing what God gave you because you have submitted everything that God gave you to everybody else instead of using what your daddy gave you. How about you take them beans you spent on how to do and build your own bank? Y'all ain't got to say nothing in here. There are a few things that empower a community. Banks that provide money for the folks. Grocery stores to feed the folks. And hospitals to, ooh, y'all ain't with it now. But we take all of our money, what your daddy gave you, and put it in the wrong thing. Oh, they ain't going to sit in the clock. That's fine. Religion tells you, bring your hundred dollar offering so God can bless you. Hint, 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 you can't buy a blessing from God. My God, I'm going to say it again. You can't buy a blessing. If that's the case, all the rich folk will live. And all of y'all poor folk will be. has given you something, it's not only that the preacher live good, you ought to live. Man, I, 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 Lord, I just helped me preach today. I just, I just, I just feel this. There are so many of us have allowed religion to beat us down that we walk around saying we serving God and ain't got nothing. That's a lie. It's God. Why would God call the children of Israel and give them their own? Can I get a preacher to help me out today? Everybody looking bewildered today. Why does God call out the children of Israel and say, I got your own land for you? Religion tell you, no, us got that. Watch this. Let me show you something. They were so stuck in tradition so long that when God broke religion through Moses and they faced some struggles and went through some storms, why, why you brought us, I healed us, Moses. Were there not enough graves in Egypt for us to die? Religion will not allow you to use. Religion will not allow you to use what God gave you because when you use, you can overcome any struggle. You don't need Pastor Clark to help you with because you can use what God gave you and you can overcome your sick. So here we are. And see, you got to understand, why does Christ go to Calvary? And he said that the veil was rent from top to bottom, which means you ain't got to go to no man. Teach the Holy Ghost. You can go to God for yourself. See, see, when you are in religion, you think you got to go to the preacher for everything. I got to go to the preacher to ask for forgiveness. That's a lie. I have to go and confess my sin. No. The Bible tells you you have an order against your brother to go to him. Now, if you don't go to them, then that's between you and the Lord. The Bible says there is no breakthrough because you are being religious. Now, watch it. Can I show you something? The Old Testament was the letter. We are so busy operating out of religion, we want to cast folks out, put folks out, when God counted folks in. Oh, y'all ain't got to send that thing in the room. See, 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 we need to use the knowledge. Paul said it best. Paul says in his writings, he says, much learning. He says, my learning was counted as dull. The word translate in the English to godly. All he was saying, he said, all of this education that I had in the sect of the old, it was considered nothing when I met Jesus. 
He says, all of that old religious stuff, I, I understand it got me to a place. He said, but watch this. Can I show y'all something? Paul says, I, w- I had something, but I didn't. He says, because of my learning was limited, I used that to persecute. He says, I used my learning of religion to persecute. What did he persecute? The church of God. So here's Paul. Now we're reading about him in Romans. Had an experience on the Damascus Road. The experience changed his direction. And see, let me tell you something. Now, watch this. He had it, but he didn't have it. Look at the difference then and now. When God changed his name from Saul to Paul, where he was now persecuted, now he comes to a place where he's bringing it. See, when you use what God gave you, watch this. I never see Jesus, or I never saw Jesus, condemning no man. Anybody beside me read that? Watch this. How many of you know people would condemn you? How many of you have been condemned yourself? Watch this, through the church. Okay. How many of you have been condemned through religion? Now, people can take the Bible and make you feel like you ain't nothing. But can I talk from Jesus' perspective? The Bible really says we all are no more than filthy rags in the eyesight. So if I ain't nothing, you ain't nothing. So God says, now watch this, verse 2 says, and be not conformed. Now, here we are. The reason we cannot use what our daddy has given us is because our values and customs are not built on Jesus. Guess what directed our path today? Social media. It took a few people to say, this is the best chicken patty on black eyes. Y'all know about black eyes, right? Black eyes. Now, this is the best chicken I had from black eyes. It's better than hen filet. All it took for somebody that really don't have no values and morals for all of y'all to run and stand in line and won't even stand in a voting line. Won't even stand in the prayer line. Won't even stand in the employment. Y'all ain't going to say it. Won't stand in line. But we're standing in line all day long. And if a pastor God preached too long, you say he's preaching too long. We're using what God gave us in the wrong way. Now, I tell you, if they want to get rid of y'all, they got y'all. Y'all ain't got to say amen. The system has been designed to keep you in bondage because you don't want to use what you got. Can I tell you something? The Bible says he's giving your hands. See, the Bible says faith without works is dead. You know what? We will borrow money to go to black eyes. That's a good name for it because most of y'all come out with a black eye. I just thought about that. Watch this. When is your experience with God is going to be different than being religious? When are you going to come into God's house and start understanding that I come to him to live, not to be beat down, but to be lifted up? When I'm going to understand that God loves me even in the midst of my mess, and he looks beyond all of my faults, and he sees my needs. So if I know God loves me, it don't matter what you say about me. It doesn't matter what you think about me. You can say what you will or may. I know what God said about me. Y'all ain't going to shout in the room. Because I'm not going to stop using what the Lord. Watch this. I see most folks stop, and you're wondering why you have a hard time. It's because you're not using it. Watch this. You can pray all day long. Okay, let me break it down to you. Anybody know Jesus? Anybody know Jesus? Did Jesus stop using what his daddy gave him? Did Jesus stop using what his daddy gave him? 
What about when the people in the temple call him the devil? He kept on what? He kept on what? He, he, okay. What, what, what about when the, the folk that were with him always said, we can't do it? Did he stop? He kept on what? What about when they try to stop blind Bartimaeus? Catch your mouth. Did it stop Jesus? Watch this. What about the little children? They tried to stop the children, but he said, suffer little children. I wish I had a Bible reading in here. I just feel like teaching. He said, suffer not. Let them children come unto me. All he was saying in retrospect, he said, I know they ain't learned, but he said, send them on anyway. There are some people that's been outside the camp that ain't been in God's house. And God said, don't shut them. Don't keep them away. Bring them on in. Now, watch this amazing. On social media, I see a lot of y'all talking about 100. Y'all don't want 100 for real. God was never positive. He was always honest. You can be positive, positive and tell a lie. I can look at Pastor Zim and Zim, you look so good there. I know I'm lying. But I'm being, y'all ain't got this, positive. can do that to nobody else because y'all be ready to fight. That low down dirty preacher say I was ugly. And watch this. Even though I was jokingly said that it don't matter what you think of me. Because you know what I found out? You know what the reason they picked on Jesus because he was using what his daddy gave him. Can I tell you something? Nobody never attacks somebody that ain't doing nothing. Nobody never attacks somebody that's sitting down pouting like something wrong with them. Nobody has nothing to say about you, but the enemy sees you even in the struggles, getting up and doing what your daddy gave you, understanding that I came to do the will of the Father that sent me. Tell somebody to do use what your daddy gave you. Now, y'all ain't going to be honest. Think about this here. How many of you ain't used what your daddy gave you? Okay. You're a reasonable servant. Why you ain't serving? Because the preacher, no, the preacher ain't got nothing to do with that. Watch this, preacher ain't got nothing to do with you loving folk. You can't put that on the preacher. The preacher ain't got nothing to do with you forgiving folk. I'm so glad, I'm, I feel like Jesus. Now, I'm going to tell you how I feel like Jesus because the Bible said the people sat and they listened. They weren't running all over the place, distracting other folk. Sit your behind down somewhere, you distracting folk. Watch this. You run around the church and fall. They're going to start laughing. They forgot what the preacher just said. Then they whisper to each other, I told they weren't in the spirit. Watch this. Look at him. He said, acceptable. Now, a lot of people get mad at me. But God wants you to utilize what he has given you. Stop being the victim of someone victim because you fail to utilize the measure of faith that God gave you. Guess what? Ain't nobody going to stop me. He has given us all a measure. Now, I'm going to show y'all something that's going to help y'all out a great deal. I'm, I'm, I'm about to speed on. I can't tell the whole story. Amen. Let me, let me go. Watch this. Look here. First, three says, for I say through the grace given unto me. Paul says there's been grace given to me that every man, to every man, listen, that is among you not to think more highly of himself and of his importance and ability. Paul is saying, he says, I am what I am through the grace of God, but that does not make me better than you. Oh, I got this gift, that make me better. That's a lie. How many ever heard people say they got this gift, that make them better? Who told y'all that lie? Y'all ain't like y'all never heard folks say that. I'm talking, about, I ain't talking about in the street. I'm talking about in church because I can quote scripture. I'm better. That's a lie. I can preach. I can talk in tongues. I can. That's a lie. Touch your neighbor. Say that's a lie. Paul says, "I am what I am because of grace." And who are you to say you're better than somebody else? Who am I to say that I'm better than you all when God's given us all something to do? Tell somebody he gave you something to do. 
And can I tell you something? God needs all of us in our places. Y'all ain't got to say, God needs all of us doing what he said in order for the whole body to function. Oh, God, y'all ain't got to say nothing. That's good. I'm going to preach anyway. Listen, don't think highly. But you ought to think, watch this, as to have sound judgment as God has appointed to each a degree. Tell me a degree. Say a degree. Of faith and purpose designed for service. Paul says all of us have a degree. I'm not talking about a, a degree, a BS or a PhD. Or not, I'm not talking about that. A degree, a level of what we should be doing. Now, many of us would question somebody else when we ain't doing what we're supposed to do ourselves. Last week, y'all just shouted, fell out in here, and you left here and did the same thing. It'd be all a shame how we do God. Yes, I said it. Because if God has given you a degree of favor, did you encourage somebody this week? Did you tell somebody, hey, don't worry about it. If you're hungry, let me feed you. Still had that same thing. I'm praying for you. I pray that your stomach get full. And I taught Wednesday night. If you don't minister to their need, you ain't done nothing. I'm glad Jesus didn't think like that. When the, when the multitudes was hungry and, 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 the, and the disciples wanted to send away, he said, I would not do that. He says, my goal is not only to bless them spiritually. Let me just tell you this again. You use what God gave you. His goal is not only that you be a spiritual being, but we, we inhabit this body. He wants you to live in a now time. It's time to stop struggling. It's time to stop straining and tell my, oh, God, come on down. God says, why do you want me to come down when I've already blessed you by dying at Calvary? He says, I covered all of your faults. And I've proven to you that you can, say with me, live. God has appointed to us every degree, each of us a degree. Verse 4 says, for as we have many members in one body, and all members not the same office. When God gives you something, he gives you something to use that help the entire body. And every gift is not the same, but according to Scripture, the same Spirit gives gifts according to what God deems necessary for the body. Now, how many of you know what a human body is? When the eyes don't function, what happens? You can't see. How can the feet know where to go if the eye is not functioning? Each one of you have a job or a purpose in the kingdom. But can I tell you something? You know why the church is crippled? Think about this here. Since you brought it in here. Since you brought it in here. Let me use it for a minute. Why is the church? It's because you, that's supposed to be leg, won't pick your leg up. And when you don't do what you're supposed to do, you cripple them. See, I, I, I can only demonstrate it to get where you can get understanding. When you are sitting down and not being the leg, and you talking about the church ain't doing that, you ain't lifting your leg. Watch this. You the hand. Watch this. And, and, and then the person that has been given a gift from God ain't utilizing gift. The hand can't. Hey, I ain't got no hand. I can't hold a mic. I can't hold a cane to help me. Now, the leg ain't doing the job. Now, the hands ain't doing the job. Oh, y'all killing God. But the man sing it, so is he. You can sing it all day in your mind. I'm singing I want to bless y'all. I'm going to bless y'all. Hey, God ain't not been mad about it. Ain't nothing coming out your mouth. We moving God.
but you sanctified. And you told a lie because if you had the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is a person. And if the person inhabits you, you want to sit here and look at me like I'm foolish. Yeah, I thought it in my mind, but I can't bless you if I ain't opening my mouth. So God says, when you use what your daddy gave you, you can lay the crush down. The church, God never died for the church to limp. He died for the church to stand up. He died that you may be a city that's set on a hill that cannot be here. Let your light so shine before men. Watch what the scripture says, that they may see your good works. If you're not utilizing what God gave you, now can I just tell you something? God, let me tell you something about religion. Religion makes you feel guilty about giving. I don't do that. If you want to rob God and cheat God, that's you. I'm going to tell you another secret. People in the world that don't know God are successful. I'm not going to lie. But watch this. I don't want to take that chance with my life. Die. And there is a God. And I miss heaven. Because anybody that got common sense, I don't care how much money you got, you can't take it with you. So people in the world, they are successful. And some of you take pattern after the world and say, well, I ain't going to get a preach. You're not giving me nothing. It don't make no difference. Can I be honest with y'all? I don't need your money. That's a relationship between you and God. And I'm not going to make you feel guilty. If you read down further, when it talks about giving, the Bible says, uh, give with simplicity. Make it simple. Stop making it so difficult. Give out of your heart. Give because you love God. Not because you're trying to impress man. The Bible says that is well-pleasing. We talked about that. So the Bible says in verse 6, Having then give differing according to the grace that is given unto us. Well, the prophecy, we go through this, let us prophesy according to the portion. Now watch this. I like this, the portion of faith. What is he saying? Even though daddy has blessed you, there's a limit. Break it down, Clark. Don't go no farther than your ability. If you have not been given the ability to sing by God, prophesy, and let the song stay to the door. Some of you take God's ability that he's given to you, and you want to go in somebody else's lane. That's why you're hitting folk. That's why you're causing accidents. I came to teach you today. The church can be crooked. We're crooked because we like not. Can I tell you, in our real life, you know why we're not successful in our real life? Because nobody tells us the truth in life. We black preachers come in here and we say, A flat, man. A flat. Sign A flat. Y'all don't, y'all don't think we preach unless we like, yeah. 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 What I just say? Nothing. got a nurse say, y'all don't hear me. Man, they listen to you. That's crazy. What are you saying? Y'all don't hear me. We got to have it say, y'all don't hear me. Yes, they are. They hear you. You just ain't saying nothing. Watch this. Ain't God all. The heathen know that. So, stop pimping God's people. Or, or ministry. Watch this. Let us wait on our own ministry, or he that teaches on teaching. Now, it's amazing that he talks about gifts that is given to the body. He said, if you have a ministry, wait on it. If you have teaching, wait on it. That means you got to learn. Even though God has given you the ability, there's a learning process. You got to sometime learn before you step out there. And so many people step out there and they don't, you do have a gift, but your gift ain't been cultivated. And you tripping up and you messing folk up. That's like them Facebook preachers. Y'all know y'all follow me. Y'all, I got so many people in this church that watch everybody preach, but they don't want to bless, listen to their pastor. That's fine. But the Bible says you got to be careful the one to have charge of your soul. You want to know why we so messed up? Because we eating off everybody's table. You realize the only way people can poison you naturally is by intake. Do you realize the devil can poison you based on what you 
of what you take in is not what defiles, but what comes in. Watch this. When you hear the wrong message and you, you agree to it, now what is affected is what your daddy gave to you. You're going to sit down because somebody told you the wrong thing. You're not using what your daddy gave you. It's because somebody told you the wrong thing that was in the church. Some preacher told you, if I were you, God said, when has God ever said, don't do what I told you to do? When has God ever? I don't have a witness. When has God ever? She has never said, I ain't going to do what God, my daddy told me to do. He never said that. So all of you with this fake and phony religion, I never talk like this to none of my other members out of here. I have a Caucasian member too. But let me tell you, African American or whatever you want to be called, wake up. Get rid of that slave religion. Who told you you wasn't blessed? Who told you you had to go to him when you ought to be going to him? Yes, I said it. So the Bible tells us, verse 9, let love be without dismissal, dissimulation. Let love be sincere and active, the real thing without juggling hypocrisy hypocrisy. There are so many of you in here shouting, talking in tongues, and can't love folks. Okay? We so low down with God, God don't do us like that. We hold everything against folks and expect to make it better. Sarah told you something. No matter how much Israel messed up, God didn't change his mind. So we become God. The biggest thing God has gave all of us is a measure of love. Are we really using it? Are we being the busy body that the Bible talks about? Preaching. The Bible says Ephesians, he said, you'll preach to the faith come out. It don't come without hearing, hearing not the word of God. But watch this. You come here to be equipped. All God is doing is equipping you to be better. Making you more successful. And that slave religion that had you bound all these years, God says, I'm opening the door to the cage. He says, will you be like the bird that will sit on your stoop and knowing the door has been open, or will you step out and fly? Will you be, do you realize in the church, I'm not talking about that, in the church there are so many stigmas. When the Bible said, even in the church, there have been many gifts. Watch it, different administrations. I can go all the way to Corinthians. He said, there are different administrations, but the same God. Guess what? I don't care what church you go to. Everybody don't do things the same way, but that don't make them bad. The Bible says in Corinthians, he gives different administrations, meaning everybody don't have the same gift. They have to use what God gave them. Here you are depicting God against God. God says, that's not so. So you didn't came, you didn't come just to church, you came just to be helped. Because some of you having a question, I'm just gonna speak. Some of you got a question is what, what is right and what is wrong? What is right is God. What is wrong is what we want. There's my side, your side, and God. Isn't it amazing that we all have different point of views, but God always has the view. And if we only get in line. And recognize, as I get ready to leave this area, those of you that's watching, if you get in line and recognize that we all have a measure of faith, it has never been in the preacher, it's never been in the deacon, it's never been in the choir, praise team leader, it's always been in me to awaken what God has already given me. You never had nobody to tell you that you were special. Let me be the first to tell you that when God made you, he made you special. He has given you something that will cause the church to stand up and walk straight. He has given you something to help the church to see. He's given you hands to help the church feel. He's given you feet to go into places that the message wouldn't otherwise get there. If you didn't stand up. The Bible says by his stripes. 
We are healed. Some of you will never be satisfied until you really meet Jesus. You will forever change the way you look. You will forever change your job. You will forever change your church. You will forever change your community because you ain't happy. And all you're doing is running from yourself. When are you going to stand up and say, I see me. And when I see me, I can see Jesus. When God met Saul, Saul, we know him as Paul, saw himself. He thought he was doing right based on religion, but God says, that's not my way. You know what? And I tell you, get off the deep end. Stop looking for the devil. That's the wrong attitude. Do what God gave you. People that's looking for the devil ain't on the offense. God never called you to go looking for him because he said, hey, you resist him. You want to know why you got so much hell in your life? It's because everything that come out your mouth, the devil, the devil, the devil. Oh, yeah, you call me. Here I am. Here I be. But when you use what God told you to do, you walk in the purpose that God called you. And why, watch this. Can I show you something? While other people summons the devil, the devil's like, ah, how you want it? And you work it. Wait a minute. You ain't nothing to me. He says, I already got you. But there go one. I go one. I see him doing what his daddy say. Or her daddy say. There go one. No matter the fuss, that is one. Now watch this. The devil comes seeking who. See, let me tell you something. He wants, he, he wants to stop progress. He don't care if you ain't doing nothing. I tell you what. Sit there and keep doing nothing. You'll find out he ain't really studying you. But when you start getting up doing what God said. Jesus found himself in the same place. Challenged by the church. Because his ways are not our ways, nor his thoughts our thoughts. He found himself being challenged. They even called him Beelzebub. Called him the devil. But you know what?